Major cuts at the Metroland Media Group, new evacuation orders as wildfires continue to burn in British Columbia, protests happening across Canada today for National Day of Action demanding that the government of Manitoba search the Prairie Green landfill, protesters in Quebec demand that Law 31 be scrapped, and a new military alliance forms in the Sahel region in Africa. Good morning. It's Monday, September 16th. I'm Nora. Here are your headlines. First, there's very bad news in Canadian journalism. I mean, is there ever any good news in Canadian journalism? My God. On Friday, the parent company of the Toronto Star and Metroland Media Group announced that it would cut 605 jobs and seek bankruptcy protection. The owners, Nordstar Group, own more than 70 local newspapers, including my own hometown paper, the Georgetown Independent and Free Press. Nordstar wants out of the flyer business and will therefore cease printing community newspapers. If you don't happen to be around one of these 70 communities, imagine the local newspaper coming in a package with five times the amount of flyers that actually is in the newspaper. That gets delivered once or twice a week, depending on where you are. This is bad news for local car dealerships, grocery couponers, and real estate agents. It's also very bad news for the 605 people who are being laid off. Word is they're not even getting severance. The winners in this, of course, are local politicians who have even less eyes on what they're doing. The local town councillors, regional councillors, and mayors will no longer have even the slightest bit of oversight, which they used to have with these 605 jobs. The cuts will eliminate 60% of the workforce of Metroland. The papers that will continue to print are the Hamilton Spectator, the Peterborough Examiner, the St. Catherine Standard, Niagara Falls Review, the Welland Tribune, and the Waterloo Region Record. Now, for some reason, the CBC story about this doesn't mention the Toronto Star, which will also continue to be printed. Nordstar was in talks earlier this year with Post Media for a merger between all of their companies, something that would be an absolute disaster for the tiny media industry that still exists in this country. Next to British Columbia, where there are more evacuation orders given due to wildfires. The orders cover some areas of the Okanagan region, Sunshine Coast, and parts of central British Columbia. The Sunshine Coast Regional District declared a state of emergency and has ordered an evacuation of 10 properties. Caribou Regional District evacuated 28 properties in the Horn Lake area due to the Hell Raving Creek wildfire. That fire is 114 square kilometers. Now, up in the Northwest Territories at Hay River, that evacuation has finally ended and residents have been allowed to go back. Many of them were evacuated in mid-August and are finding significant damage to their property. Next, protests have been called in towns and cities all over Canada today, demanding that the Manitoba government greenlight the search of the Prairie Green landfill. There are the remains of Morgan Harris and Mercedes Myron, two Indigenous women who were murdered. The Day of Action will see events in 17 cities and towns all over the country. You can look online to see if there's an action near you so you can attend. Global News spoke with Tara Martinez from the group Children First Society of Canada, and she said this, quote, I hope that this will be the last one we have to do and we'll be able to search. But knowing how our government works, we're just getting started. Next to Quebec, where protests happened in towns and cities across the province against the proposed Bill 31, that bill would stop tenants from being able to pass their lease onto someone else or sublet. The protests were organized by Le Regroupement des Comités de Logement et Association des Locataires du Québec, or the Coalition of Housing Committees and Tenant Associations. There were protests in Montreal, Quebec City, Rouen, Noranda, and Sherbrooke. The right for tenants to pass their lease onto someone else is one of the most powerful tools that tenants have in Quebec, and really in Canada, to stop landlords from hiking their rents. 
tenants have the right to give their lease with all of the conditions, including the rent, to someone else. It also allows for tenants to determine who the next tenants are. One of the benefits of this system is it allows tenants to determine who the next tenants will be in an apartment, which helps to reduce discrimination in the rental market. Lease transfers help to rebalance power between tenant and landlord, and they're one of the reasons for why Quebec has the lowest rents in Canada. The Coalition Avenir Quebec promised to do away with the right of tenants to transfer their leases, but the opposition to the measure has been strong enough that maybe they will change their mind. Last week, Radio-Canada reporter Thomas Gerbet reported that Premier François Legault has said during a parliamentary session on the legislation that he might be ready to reconsider the proposed bill. And finally, Al Jazeera is reporting that Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger have signed a new defense pact. It is called the Alliance of Sahel States and commits to defending any member, including if there is a military attack on them. Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger's borders all meet. The place where they meet is called the Liptako Gurma region. It's there that all three countries have experienced armed rebellion, including from Al Qaeda and ISIS groups. Malian Defense Minister Abdullahi Diop said that the alliance is both a partnership for military and economic efforts. Back in 2017, these countries, along with Chad and Mauritania, had formed something called the G5 Sahel Alliance Joint Force. It was intended to give these countries the capacity to fight together against Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and the alliance was backed by France. France has already been forced to pull troops from Mali and Burkina Faso, while troops remain in Niger. The junta wants France to withdraw its troops. They also want France to recognize the country's new leadership. Those are your headlines for Monday, September 16th. I'm Nora. I'm Nora. Just so you know, I am on the road this week. And so if you wake up and see that there is no daily news, it's because I just couldn't figure out how to do it. But I am planning to continue. So... I'll come from you tomorrow from an undisclosed location. Talk to you then.